Hello, mathematicians. Thank you for coming to another math lesson. Today, what I want to look at is it's a basic lesson, but it's really important because there are so many ways that we can look at fractions. And today, what I want to do is go over the three different kinds of fraction models that we have. And if you can look at a fraction and do all three, then you really understand it. So I want to go over uh, those three with you today. So first, let's name them. There are three major categories or models or ways to represent fractions. First is the area model. Next is the length or linear model. And third is the set model. And we're going to look at all three of those. Um, and then I'm going to test you at the end to see if you were paying attention. Um, so let's get started first with the area model. Let's look at what it is. In the area model, a fraction is represented as part of an area or part of a shape. The whole is the shape or the area. Here's an example. For example, using the area model to represent three-fourths, the area model would look like this. So we have a fraction area model here showing three-fourths. And by the way, I'm going to use three-fourths for all the models so you can see it represented in different ways. When you see it like this, the square is partitioned into four equal parts. That's where the denominator comes from. There's four equal parts. And three of those four parts are shaded. That's where the three comes from. <clears throat> so, here's a bonus question. What fraction isn't shaded? One-fourth isn't shaded. That's right. One of the four equal parts is not shaded. So three-fourths and one-fourths would be a whole, or four-fourths. The next model we want to look at is the length model. It's also called the linear model. <clears throat> In the length or linear model, a fraction is represented as a length, most typically on a number line. A fraction strip is often used for this too. You may make fraction strips and fold them up into different lengths. Um, that's actually a length or a linear model too. <clears throat> for example, using the linear model to represent three-fourths, the fraction could be found on a number line. And I want you to see a number line. It starts at zero and it goes to one. Three-fourths is bigger than zero, but it's smaller than one. It's not a whole yet. So we would represent it here. Now, we can see, and the reason we know we have fourths is because we don't count the lines but we count the spaces because those are the equal places. So we have one, two, three, four intervals or spaces. The denominator is four. And they're between zero and one. And it breaks the length into fourths. Now we count the spaces. We have one space, two spaces, three spaces. And that's why that place is three fourths. Now, I have a bonus question. Can you use the line breaks to count by fourths? Have you ever done that before? Let's try it. See if you can do it with me. We start at zero, and then we go one-fourth, two-fourth, three-fourth, one, or four-fourths, and you could even count backwards. Four-fourths, three-fourths, two-fourths, one-fourth, zero. <clears throat> Third model we have is the set model. In the set model, a fraction is represented as part of a set. The portion or part might be called a subset. The whole is the entire set. For example, using the set model to represent three-fourths, a set model might look like this. And you can see it here. In this representation, we can see there are four cats. Again, that's where the denominator comes from. But three of the four cats are gray. So, three-fourths of the cats are gray. You might see a question in your math book or on a test that asks you a fraction of a class or a fraction of some group of items. And that's what this is. So, let's practice. What fraction model is this? It's the area model, that's right, because we have an area filled in. 
What fraction of the shape is shaded? One fourth, that's right. What fraction of the shape is unshaded? Three fourths, that's correct. Now, which fraction model is shown below? Is this the area model, set model, or the length or linear model? It is the length or linear model, is C, that's correct. Now, how is this number line partitioned? Or I could ask, what are the fractional units? So again, we're going to count the spaces. Can you count the spaces? Let's do it together. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's partitioned how many ways? Six. And the fractional units would be what? What would we be counting by? Sixths, that's correct. So, what fraction is indicated by the dot? If we're counting by six, how would I count? We would have it what? One sixth, two sixths. So that dot is where? Two sixths. Can you count by fractional units from zero to one and back to zero? Forwards and backwards. Let's try it together. Zero, one sixth, two sixth, three sixth, four sixth, five sixth, and six sixth. That makes a whole. Then we count backwards. Six sixth, five sixth, four sixth, three sixth, two sixth, one sixth, and zero. What fraction model is shown below? Area model, set model, or length or linear model? It's the set model, that's right. Now, what fractional units should I use? Here's a hint. How many are in the set? Five, that's right. So what fraction unit, what fractional unit should I use? Fifths, that's correct. What fraction of the set are pigs? Two fifths, that's right, because there's two pigs. What fraction of the set are penguins? Three fifths, that's correct, because one, two, three in the set are penguins. Now, last practice. You can pause it here if you want to in the video, or you can just try it yourself. Can you represent this fraction using all three models? The area model, the length of the linear model, and the set model. And the fraction is two-fourths. Give it a try. I am not going to put the answer here, but see if you can talk to your teacher or a classmate and see if you are correct. Thanks for sticking with me till the end. You're getting better every day. I'm so proud of you.